Thank you. And it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for this opportunity. Actually, um, this is the second time I'm in Tartu. Uh, the first time was about 20 years ago when I came here uh, to make some evaluation on Estonian medic uh, pharmaceuticals legislation. And it seems that the city has changed a lot. I uh, promised to introduce myself a little bit more. So um, I'm working in the Finnish Medical Association since more than seven years now. And I have a legal background. I'm not a medical doctor, but I have worked my whole career in the healthcare field. First in the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health and now, now in the FMA, where I'm responsible for uh, health policy issues and international and health or medical ethics issues. So the topic today is patient insurance in Finland. Unfortunately, I couldn't understand everything <laughs> what was said before. But uh, perhaps uh, just a couple of words of Finnish healthcare system first. Um, the system is universal, covers all residents, it is mainly tax financed, and it is run by around 300 municipalities at the moment. But uh, the word today in, uh, in Finnish system is change. Everything is changing. Uh, we have the uh, um, biggest reform in social and healthcare system in our history also regional reform. Um, we're going to change organization and financing. We're going to change um, legislation on healthcare professionals, um, uh, data protection, medical research, uh, also patient insurance legislation, which I will tell a little bit more later on. But uh, I will tell now about the current system. And it, I, I should say already now that patient insurance will not change that much. So we all know, all know that um, medical errors happen. Um, and the estimate or studied um, um, number of uh, adverse events is about 10% of inpatient admissions. We don't have exact figures from Finland, but this, is, um, this figure has been studied and, and it is about the same in many countries. There are two main um, systems how to compensate patient injuries, adverse events. Um, the one that I understood is used now by Estonia, in Estonia, is a um, tort system, so it's a court-based system, where the compensation, compensation is only given if the victim can um, establish that the healthcare personnel was at fault for his or her injury. And that system is used, for example, in the UK and the United States. Then there's, a, I would say, Nordic model for this, which is used also in New Zealand. And it is um, no-fault patient insurance. It uses administrative system rather than the courts to compensate injuries. And it is independent of providers' uh, negligence or fault. And here you can see how the legislation has developed in the Nordic countries. Um, we use the term no fault or no blame patient insurance. And although Finland was the first one to um, have a law on this issue, the system was 
used before that already in Sweden and Norway. And in Finland, the law entered into force 2000 and, uh, no, <laughs> 1987, Patient Injuries Act. And it, is, um, it provides security for patients and healthcare personnel. It covers all medical activity in Finland, be it hospital care, physicians or dentist practice, healthcare, um, ambulance services, taking samples of, uh, of a patient, rehabilitation or physiotherapy. And the insurance is mandatory to all medical organizations. Um, medical personnel normally is insured by the employer, but uh, individual practicing doctors um, have to insure themselves. Although the Finnish Medical Association has taken a group uh, insurance for them. So if they're members, like um, more than 90% of Finnish physicians are members of the Finnish Medical Association, they get this um, service as a membership service. Uh, and it is uh, part of, uh, well, they actually pay some of it in their membership fee which is 512 euros per year, but, but um, that then they are insured, so they don't have to worry about that. And here's the list of um, those who, are, who have to take the insurance. As I mentioned, uh, the self-employed healthcare professionals, not only doctors, but all other um, regulated healthcare professionals in Finland. Also companies which offer healthcare services have to insure their personnel and companies who, that offer uh, emergency medical services, ambulance services, although not, all, not always their personnel is, um, are healthcare professionals, but nevertheless they are obliged to take, in, take out insurance. And pharmacies, hospital districts, government agencies and public bodies um, are um, obliged to ensure those activities that relate to patient care. And if there is a fa failure to insure, then they are obliged to pay a penalty premium this may, may be as much as tenfold to the normal premium, but in practice it's uh, threefold if there are no patient injuries and sixfold if there have been patient injuries. The premium depends on the classification of risks involved in the operations. So, um, uh, Healthcare organizations can, and self-employed healthcare professionals can take this insurance either from private insurance companies or then uh, patient insurance center. And normally public bodies are insured by uh, patient insurance center. But uh, the premium can and is, is different um, can be different and it, it is uh, different depending on the case. So health, self, for self-employed healthcare professionals, uh, usually it is a fixed sum. And for private companies or communities, premium is usually calculated based on the total salaries paid out by the company and using a factor corresponding to the risk classification of its operations. And for public sector operators, Premium is determined for each insured party individually, mainly according to full liability principle. So this, is, um, this follows the logic of insurance markets and there is a competition involved. Here you can see example of uh, premium, those physicians who operate 
patients do surgery, it is higher, there's more risk, and it's, uh, it may be something like 2,000 euros, and uh, premium for non-operating physician is about 300 euros. But this varies according to insurance company. And it is not only purely surgery, it is, um, it's interpreted quite broadly. Something that uh, it is invasive treatment or examinations that involves bigger risk for the patient. The operational, operational structure of um, the system is here. So I'm not going to explain everything, but you can see that ministry is responsible for legislation. And um, then there, is, there are those private insurance companies and uh, patient insurance center. And its task is to handle all claims that come to, that patients make. Um, and it, it gives instructions to the member companies and um, insured parties um, claim, can claim for indemnity and uh, from the patient insurance center and um, patient insurance board uh, gives statements and kind of second opinions on cases that go to patient insurance center and gives recommendations for decisions. The insurance covers uh, these injuries. Um, there are seven types of different injuries that are covered, but most common, definitely the most common is the first one, treatment injury. And uh, it, it is about 90% of uh, cases. And infection injury is the second most common. That's about 10% of all cases. And the rest of them, they happen, but not that often. And uh, the last one, unreasonable injury, perhaps it's um, uh, good to say that, um, that that is something that there is a permanent incapacity for the patient and um, the consequences are um, worse than normally. So it is considered um, um, that this should be compensated to the patient. And a few words about these uh, three most or two most common and then pharmaceutical injuries. As I said, treatment injury is the most typical compensable injury. Um, it is a bodily injury which was caused by an examination, treatment, or other similar action performed on the patient or the failure to do so. And how is this evaluated? There is a so-called uh, experienced medical professional that is this uh, action is compared to. And if this uh, experienced medical professional could have performed a different procedure in the examination or treatment in question, thereby, and thereby avoiding the injury, then there is a case where the compensation can be paid. But this varies according to a physician and his position and what can be expect what can be expected objectively of a certain physician. For example, a general practitioner at a healthcare center and a specialist at a universal hospital have different requirements. Then we have um, infection injury. And um, there, during medical procedures, there is often a risk of infection, and a certain amount of infections are um, 
have to be accepted. But uh, if the, it goes above that level, then the case may be compensated. So ordinary superficial fast healing infections will always fall outside the scope of compensation. And if uh, the uh, procedure or treatment is, um, and patient's condition is more serious, then uh, he or she is expected to tolerate more serious consequences of an infection. Also, um, um, bodily injuries caused by prescription pharmaceuticals are compensated if these drugs were delivered by the pharmacist, contrary to the prescription or regulations governing the delivery of pharmaceuticals. But only in this case. If there are side effects from some pharmaceutical uh, which was appropriately prescribed and dosed, they are not compensated from this system, but there is a voluntary pharmaceutical injuries insurance, and the, the compensation may then come from that system. There's a list of issues that are not covered. Injuries that have occurred outside the geographical area of Finland, and that really is strict. And if uh, the, the there's a plane or flight going from, as I came yesterday from Helsinki to Tartu, uh, by plane, um, if I, there was some kind of medical condition and there had been a doctor and, and uh, he had been treating me and medical error would have happened um, inside Estonian airspace, I wouldn't have been um, 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 entitled to this compensation, according to Finnish law. Uh, material damage, financial losses, uh, pure financial losses are not covered. And of course, uh, um, injuries that occurred before uh, the law entered into force is not covered. And, and if there's domestic help ordinary assistance services, these are not covered and insignificant injuries either. And there's a um, limit, euro limit, if the costs incurred do not exceed 200 euros, then they are not compensated. Procedure, um, as I already mentioned, we have patient insurance center that handles and pays the claims Compensation must be claimed within three years uh, from the date at which the party or patient uh, learned or should have known about the injury. And for specific reasons, only uh, after three years deadline. Here's briefly the procedure explained. And perhaps um, well, what happens in the patient insurance uh, center is that, of course, they gather all information relating to this um, um, claim. And then they get expert opinion and made, make a decision, which can be positive. Well, and after that, uh, the amount of compensation will be defined. Or if it's negative, a patient has a right to appeal. And these are um, the ways to appeal. They, uh, the patient can request for review from the patient insurance center, or then refer it, ask it to refer it to a patient insurance board, which is the second opinion um, body. And uh, also, there is a possibility to take the case to the court. And now I have some figures of the system. As you can see, or if you can see, <laughs> um, there is um, 
quite steady increase in the number of claims. Uh, last year, there were 8,334 8, claims. Decisions made are described here. And uh, the red one is uh, positive, where the patient has been granted compensation. So it, it is not that often the patients really get compensation from the system. It is about something between 25-30% of cases. Here uh, we can see uh, um, some of the most common uh, patient injuries that are have entitled to indemnity last year, orthopedical operations, other operations, or anesthesia. Uh, the next one, the biggest one, is clinical research or therapy, and I would say that this is um, mainly from clinical therapy, not research. And dental care is also one of the most commonly compensated. Probably you can't see any, anything of this, but I just wanted to take it here, and you will get these slides later on. Uh, this describes most general operations in patient, in patient injuries entitled to indemnity in 2014 and 16. It differ differentiates between private providers and public providers, and it tells uh, the share of private sector. For example, dental care is mainly private in Finland. And uh, the top two um, procedures here are prosthetic replacement of hip or knee joint, which probably is not a surprise. And um, here you can see patient insurance indemnities and claims settlement expenses paid 2011 and 2016. Um, it is about 40 million euros. Uh, it was last year. Um, there has been a slight increase during the past years. Although this may sound a big sum, on the other hand, it is um, something like 1%, 2% of all total health care spending in Finland. So compared to that, it is not that much. Patient injuries entitled to indemnity in 2016 according to type of compensation. So what, from what um, damage or uh, um, the patient gets compensation. The biggest one here is compensation for loss of income, almost 40%. Then permanent incapacity, almost 15%. Temporary incapacity, 13.4%. And then there are extra costs in medical treatment and rehabilitation. 11.7%. And also, can, um, the injury can cause increased cost of living if there has to be uh, alterations in a patient's home due to some sort of incapac incapacity. And finally, I would like to mention a few words about advantages of the system. Uh, it is easy and free of charge for the patient. Um, you, patients can find all the information and necessary forms to fill um, on the internet. There is also an online test. Um, is it worth filing a notice of injury? 
and there a patient can see through a few questions whether his or her case is such where um, notice could be done. Uh, there is no need to f search for a guilty person. Physician is not blamed or punished as part of this system. Of course, there are cases when uh, a physician has really done something wrong, um, and this system does not exclude any disciplinary measures or actions um, for example, by our National Supervisory Authority for health, Welfare and Healthcare. But still, a patient can get compensation and physician is not necessarily uh, taken to the court or given any kind of punishment. Uh, the system is relatively fast. The average time to get a decision is uh, seven point half months. Uh, some may say it's not uh, not enough, but um, considering the amount of cases and quite scarce resources of patient insurance center, this is rather good. And there is a small, but still in, uh, it exists an incentive to enhance patient safety, and uh, administrative costs are rather low. Of course, there are also weaknesses. Um, we have rather low rate of compensated claims. Um, if, if in Finland it is something like 25-30% in Sweden, uh, where the criteria is almost identical, uh, they compensate in nearly half of the cases. And um, uh, the explanation why there's uh, such a huge difference, um, um, it has not been uh, discovered or studied thoroughly. Um, there have one um, person um, my, uh, from the National Institute for Health and Welfare did, it, did her academic um, thesis on, on the topic, studies on filed and compensated claims for patient injuries. And uh, she was um, actually wondering about this difference, but couldn't find any clear answer to this. You can find this book probably uh, from the website of National Institute for Health and Welfare, or at least um, order the book if you are interested in it. So compensation payments in Finland are rather low, but still there is one, one thing that, uh, that I would like to say about um, these cases. Quite often, although patient has suffered some sort of injury, if it's not permanent, if it's not really bad, then very often just a discussion with a patient, an apology. Although there, it is not clear who did what did uh, in the healthcare institution, uh, was it the physician or was it the nurse or who, who was it, uh, it doesn't matter as long as the patient, uh, there is a discussion with the patient and somebody apologizes and that helps a lot and that, that culture is not perhaps um, totally developed in Finland. I don't know about it, in Estonia. Then um, if this has been taken care of, then money is, doesn't pay that big role anymore in the process. Uh, there, uh, in the process in Finland, uh, there is uh, some imbalance between patients and professionals uh, in possibilities to express their views and experiences during the process. Because the patient files the claim and explains there briefly what has happened, what he or she thinks, and afterwards it is mainly uh, the professionals that explain what happened and um, give their um, 
explanations, and, and there should be maybe more, um, like uh, Jutta Järvelin suggested in her thesis, that there should be perhaps interviews of patients, professionals. Of course, that requires resources, but that would give better uh, picture of the whole issue. And um, there is a feedback system from patient insurance to the institution where the medical error happened, but it's poorly known and it's, it doesn't necessarily reach the person who, or persons who were involved in that medical error. And I would like to, yes, thank you for your attention, but uh, there is still one, uh, one thing I would like to mention, and I promise to mention. There is a um, reform planned for the system uh, that would enter into force January 2019 as uh, our social health care reform as everything, what is now being uh, reformed in Finland. So from one law on patient injury, we would move to three laws. The one, uh, one would be on the process and patient injury compensation system. Another two would be on these organizations, patient insurance center and patient insurance board. And um, there would, uh, as, as I mentioned, the law is now very strict on a geographical area of Finland. In the future, if hospital sends a patient abroad, and organizes healthcare in that way, the insurance would cover if something happened in the other country. And implantable medical devices are not currently covered by the system. They, um, medical errors or adverse events related to these would be compensated in the future, um, and occupational rehabilitation would be, would be one of those that would be covered. And um, currently, there's no clear rule what happens if the physician uh, is in the court or patient has filed a case against a physician and it is in the court and at the same time it is handled by the patient insurance center. So in the future, the plan is that um, first this patient insurance would be solved. And after that, if there are additional uh, claims from the patient, only those would be handled by the court. This is, uh, at the moment, a suggestion by the um, working group uh, published in last uh, December, and we will see how, how it will be taken forward. Thank you. for a very thorough overview of 30 years experience and uh, as we see it has stabilized quite well and there's a lot to learn. Uh, Thank you very for a very clear talk. Uh, I, would, I would like to ask despite of that very elegant system of patient insurance do you still have or, or how many uh, suitcases court cases do you have per year? in Finland when patients are suing the doctor? Okay, yes, very good question. Actually, I planned to mention this, but forgot it. Uh, we have about um, 20,000 um, working age physicians in Finland. And um, if we compare it to the normal number of um, adverse events, 10% of them, that's about 2,000. And we only have about 20 to 30 cases going into the court per year. So patient insurance system really prevents court cases against physicians. There's no need to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. What we really learned from your presentation is that uh
if you apologize, it saves costs. So, so it is also something to uh, us to, uh, to consider when we are planning our system to build it up.